are you sorry are you able to see if people are waiting or ah there we go we have one participant yeah let's wait a minute longer for okay. to allow more people to join perhaps We can wait another minute and then see who's here and then go ahead and get started. Um, in the meantime, for all of you who have joined, I'm going to go ahead and drop a link uh, so you can access the slides yourself um, before I forget to do that later on. Uh, so it should appear in the chat box to your right. And I'll also go ahead and take this opportunity to get everything set up and share my screen so we can go ahead and get started. Well, I guess uh, we'll, we can go ahead and get started. And then if people join us, they, they join us. Um, so thank you to everyone who is joining us today for our session called Implementing the Fair Data Principles, the Ethnic and Migrant Minority Survey Registry. Um, it, I am Ami Saji. I'm a junior researcher supporting shock through test point uh, 9.2, which is a data community dedicated to the ethnic and migration studies field. And I'm joined by uh, Laura, and I'll let her quickly uh, do a brief introduction of herself as well. So oh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Laura Morales. I'm a professor of political science at uh, Sciences Po in, in Paris. And with Ami, I'm working um, in the SHOCK project on the ethnic and migrant uh, minority studies data community. And uh, we will be presenting, both of us today, how we're implementing the free data principles um, uh, on a tool, a new tool that we've developed in the context of both the SHOCK project and other projects that we will talk about in a minute. Thank you. And before we jump into kind of the, the substance of our session today, I have been reminded of some housekeeping rules by the event organizers that I wanted to just go over with you quickly. So first, uh, this session will be recorded and made available afterwards through the EASC website. Uh, second, we ask that everyone stay muted and keep their video off uh, during the presentation just to help with the connectivity and the bandwidth. And then third, um, if you have any questions that you have about the content of our presentation, um, we invite you to drop them in directly into the chat feature of Zoom, which you should be able to find um, on the right hand side. And then um, we will go through each and every question during the Q&A section that we have dedicated towards the end. Um, all right, so in terms of today's objective, so this session has really been designed uh, for all of you, whether you are a data user or data producer, to learn more about our EMM survey registry, specifically first in terms of how it was conceptualized and developed in line with the FAIR principles. Second, um, how the EMM survey registry and its survey level metadata can be used and leveraged for a wide range of research and policy related work. And then third, how the EMM survey registry has been set up so it can be sustained and updated in the short and long term. And so with these learning objectives in mind, we have organized today's session as follows. I, I will begin um, by giving a very brief overview of what the ethnic and migration data, uh, studies data community is and how we arrived to developing um, what we call the EMM survey registry. 
I'll then hand things over to Laura, who will then uh, discuss in more detail the process we have undertaken to develop the EMM survey registry and more explicitly explain the link between the FAIR uh, principles and the EMM survey registry. She'll also use that opportunity to do a live demonstration of the front end of the registry. And then she'll hand things back over to me and I will wrap up by talking about the sustainability of the EMM survey registry, which is very much linked to how the back end of the registry has been set up. And I'll also do a very brief demonstration of the back end so you can kind of see how it functions and, and how it really does promote a sustainability for us. So in terms of the ethnic and migration studies data community, it brings together all different types of stakeholders of quantitative survey research undertaken with EMM populations. So we have data producers, data users, and individuals involved in data curation all working together through this data community. And because this data community brings together so many different types of people, uh, we found it important to organize ourselves in a way that, uh, that we can easily or efficiently work through our scientific work. So first, we have the Task 9.2 team of SHOCK, which includes myself as well, as well as Laura, and we participate in and contribute to SHOCK on behalf of this larger data community. And our primary role is to coordinate and manage the, uh, the scientific work that we're doing. The second group is called Ethnic Survey Data, and this is an international network funded by the Cost Association, and it has more than 200 EMM-focused researchers from Europe and beyond. And because this is a research network, the primary objective for Ethnic Survey Data is to provide the intellectual impetus needed in order to actually do the scientific work that's of interest to our data community. And then the third group, which is called Fair Ethnic Quant, is the newest to join our data community. And it is an open science project funded by the French Agence Nationale de la Recherche. And its main purpose is to ensure the inclusion of the French surveys in the scientific work. So as we talk about the EMM survey registry and the work that we're doing, it's important to kind of keep in mind that the data community not only involves these different stakeholders, but also that we do have these different types of groups, as we call them, involved and contributing in their own ways to ensure that we have this FAIR compliant uh, EMM survey registry tool. Now the data community, in addition to being very much focused on a specific discipline, and for us, this means the ethnic and migration studies field, we have a common goal, which is to make quantitative survey data on ethnic and migrant minorities, EMMs, more accessible and reusable to a wide range of users in Europe and beyond. So we're envisioning both researchers, policymakers, and any other users to be able to, to tap into uh, the type of data that we're working with. And within the context of the SHOCK project, we as a data community have planned for two deliverables. The first is launching this EMM survey register Registry, which is a free online tool that is fair and will display once uh, fully completed survey level metadata for over 800 quantitative EMM surveys from over 30 different European countries. And this tool is currently live and available as a beta version. So it means it's fully functional, but just doesn't have the full uh, 800 plus surveys that we have identified uh, included uh, yet. Um, and because it's live, this is why we're kind of centering today's discussion on this tool. Uh, but then a second deliverable that we have is to test the feasibility of setting up as part of another tool which is being developed by SESTA called the European Question Bank or EQB for short, for short um, and really see if the surveys that we are including in the EMM survey registry can be included in the EQB as well. So I just wanted to mention this deliverable as well to really show how as a data community we're thinking about making the EMM survey data fair through the development of user-friendly and user-centric tools. So now I will go ahead and switch, stop my screen and go ahead and transition over to Lada, who will walk us through a bit more about the EMM survey registry itself. Thank you, Ami. So um, as Ami was saying, uh, what we've been doing within this uh, data community is to create, um, uh, we have a, a number of, of, of different goals and, and uh, uh, targets that Ami has just presented, but one of uh, the key uh, pieces of work that we've been focusing on is the creation of this uh, uh, survey registry of ethnic and migrant minority um, surveys. And um, the whole idea, the whole purpose um, in constructing and building up uh, this tool and this uh, resource is to make sure 
that we can uh, uh, contribute to making uh, survey data on ethnic and migrant minorities um, fair and compliant to the fair principles. And before I move on into uh, telling you a little bit how we do um, uh, each of those things, uh, I, I would like to give you a little bit of, of context and motivation for, for this work. Um, the work uh, uh, has started uh, within this uh, various uh, kind of international um, uh, networks of both uh, data producers, uh, data uh, users, and, and data um, uh, creators, primarily um, bearing in mind that uh, over the past uh, 30 years, uh, European countries have become important destinations um, for uh, migrants, but at the same time, um, that uh, European countries are um, socially heterogeneous uh, uh, societies uh, where ethnic uh, and very often autochthonous uh, ethnic minorities uh, coexist. Uh, and this can be minorities uh, uh, based on linguistic, religious, national or racial um, uh, differences. And in the last uh, 20 years, the need uh, for information about the integration uh, difficulties and kind of the inclusion barriers that these uh, two types of minorities face has become um, increasingly demanded from various uh, sectors of society and from policy makers. So uh, our goal uh, is uh, uh, with this work that we're doing both within uh, the Shock project and within uh, these uh, data communities um, uh, animated through the cost section and and the French project that Ami just uh, mentioned to allow to uh, reuse and, and um, deliver the full potential and the full and used uh, potential of survey data that exists on this um, minorities. And um, this is the main purpose of the survey registry to um, serve as a single access point where uh, people, different kinds of users, uh, data users, um, that can come from uh, different types of organizations, but also uh, data producers can go into a single uh, uh, point of access uh, to find uh, survey data on ethnic and migrant uh, minorities to be able to get information about how to access um, such data and uh, to facilitate uh, the survey data on ethnic and migrant minorities to become uh, reusable. And we do all of that uh, with the idea of making all of the information about these uh, uh, surveys um, interoperable. Um, and I'll very briefly guide you through each of these goals. So how do we uh, make the data uh, findable? Well, uh, first, as you will see um, in a minute when I'll be doing the presentation uh, live, um, this uh, uh, survey registry that we've created um, makes it easier to locate all of the surveys that exist across Europe. Uh, in a sense, uh, the registry that we've created is like a census of existing surveys, or at least this is the goal that we have set up uh, for ourselves. And uh, we've designed the registry um, such that it's easy to nav navigate the information about the technical characteristics of the survey. We provide very detailed uh, metadata, so data about the data, information about the data, through uh, user-friendly um, interfaces that will uh, give people uh, systematic documentation of uh, the characteristics of um, the survey. And um, we do that also by uh, following the principle of making uh, the data um, more accessible than it is uh, right now. Uh, first of all, um, what we do is that the metadata about each of the surveys that are uh, listed um, in the survey registry are made uh, publicly available online and everyone who actually wants uh, to download the metadata for one or several surveys can actually do that. Um, but more importantly, the metadata about each of the surveys actually specifies the way in which uh, people who are uh, interested in accessing the actual microdata uh, can actually do so, or if they're not interested in the microdata, they can access the technical documentation or the questionnaire or relevant publications, depending on what it is that they're interested in. In addition to that, uh, we mobilize the interoperability uh, principle of the FER principles by um, uh, providing the metadata in such a way that they can be uh, shared both uh, with humans and uh, with machines. 
Um, and we uh, uh, primarily do that uh, for uh, kind of a, a machine readability by uh, providing XML files um, uh, in DDI uh, to standard. Uh, finally, uh, we um, implement uh, the reusability uh, principle by uh, uh, structuring metadata in such a way that it's uh, very uh, detailed and informative and that it can uh, allow people who want to reuse uh, the data uh, to actually locate uh, clearly uh, where the data is or what steps they need to take in order to uh, be able to reuse um, the data. Now, the way in which we've uh, implemented these uh, uh, principles is by following um, a number of uh, uh, detailed uh, methodological steps that allow us, uh, have, that have allowed us to actually construct and build up this uh, survey registry following uh, strict uh, methodological uh, protocols. So first, um, in the data community as a whole, and primarily through the cost association, we discussed and we spent quite a bit of time, uh, more than a year, uh, discussing how to delimit the scope of which surveys would be included and which surveys would be excluded. To give you an example, this is the stage in which we decided that uh, uh, the census uh, uh, surveys uh, or data that are part of official statistics would not be part of um, the list of uh, surveys that we would put um, together, but also when we decided that qualitative research would be excluded from this particular uh, registry. We then uh, uh, followed by defining uh, carefully the search process um, and we've homogenized the set of instructions and care guidelines for uh, the national delegations in each of the European countries that will be included in the registry of how they need to uh, find uh, those surveys and how they need to search for them. But very importantly, um, uh, we did provide very clear guidance on uh, how to document uh, the metadata. So each country delegation was provided uh, with the same uh, template with over 200 metadata variables and, and uh, they have had to actually fill in the same uh, uh, templates uh, for uh, compiling the information about the surveys in the respective uh, countries. And finally, a stage where we still are um, uh, in terms of our development and our work is that we've established uh, very thorough quality checks and protocols uh, that allow us to ensure that the metadata that it's, has been produced and that will be ultimately uh, uploaded into the online tool has uh, uh, met with kind of rigorous uh, quality standards in terms of um, coherence, consistency, and uh, reliability. Um, I will now uh, show you uh, what is the stage of the work that we've done and, and, and how the beta version uh, looks like. Um, at this stage, even if our ambition is to uh, cover uh, uh, approximately 30 countries all over Europe and in, in neighboring countries, um, as well. We have uh, completed all of those steps, including the quality control for 14 different countries. And you can see on this slide, both uh, the list of the countries, um, as well as the number of surveys that we've uh, been able to identify and fully document uh, for each of those uh, 14 countries. And you can already see that there's um, a wide variety of uh, situations in terms of how uh, uh, survey data reach uh, um, each of those countries. Um, is. Um, in addition, uh, since October, uh, we've been monitoring uh, the, the, the use and the access uh, uh, to the survey registry. And um, in the month of October, we had over 400 visitors from across the globe and, and primarily from Europe and North America. So it does seem that um, uh, the registry is getting uh, quite a bit of traction. And our hope is that um, the registry will become better and better known across uh, the relevant data communities so that the data communities will take ownership of the registry and will help us uh, uh, stabilize it and uh, make it sustainable over time. Now, um, in this slide, um, uh, if you want in the future, you can actually refer to it uh, to understand better what are the different elements of the um, uh, survey registry in terms of the functionalities uh, that it includes, but I'll be giving you um, a live uh, demonstration of, of how it works because we believe that it's uh, with this live demonstration that things um, become uh, clearer. 
So I'll move into my web browser. Um, hopefully you can see it uh, properly. This is the landing page uh, uh, of uh, the description of the survey registry. Um, you can read at your own time in detail a description of how we've organized the work and what is the methodology uh, that we've uh, actually uh, followed and all of the material that we've used uh, to train the country representatives uh, so that they actually all follow the same protocols and the same methodology. And you will be able to also see the list of the countries uh, that we're hoping to cover at the end of the process. Only those highlighted in blue are the ones that have already been uploaded to the survey registry. And whenever you click on one of them, then you'll get uh, the information about uh, who uh, and how and, and up to uh, which date um, the survey registry uh, information for that country has been um, compiled. When you've uh, uh, read through all of this information about the registry uh, itself, you can just click on this link, access the EMM uh, survey registry to uh, save a little bit of time. I've opened that link directly here. And this is the first landing page that you get um, into the registry. Um, in the first instance, when you open uh, the, the online tool of the survey registry, what you get is the full um, output of all of the surveys that have been already uh, uploaded into the registry. So as of now, because we have nearly 500 surveys, uh, you get uh, 496 um, uh, results. Um, but we anticipate that most users will be interested in narrowing down uh, those uh, searches. So for that purpose, we have a first uh, tool that allows uh, to do simple filtering through some variables. So perhaps you're interested only in uh, surveys that have been conducted in Germany and in the UK. So you can select those countries and as you see, uh, the uh, research, uh, the search results narrowed down to 257. And then maybe you're only interested in certain types of survey, for example, surveys that are uh, longitudinal or, or panels, so that have been uh, repeated over time with at least uh, partially overlapping samples, and then you get a kind of narrower um, uh, search result. Uh, this area will give you a summary of all of the uh, filters that you've already applied. Um, in addition to this uh, uh, simple filtering that we have here on the left-hand side uh, that allows for a subset of, of the variables, uh, we also have um, uh, an advanced uh, filtering option that allows you to filter uh, through a lot um, of additional metadata variables. And most importantly, I wanted to show um, that it is in this advanced filtering that we have the information about what are the main topics that are covered by the survey. So perhaps you're interested only in um, uh, searching for uh, surveys that uh, focus, uh, for example, on topics relating to discrimination, racism, and xenophobia. So you can actually select on the basis of that uh, narrower focus that you're interested in and um, limit your search um, in that way. In addition to that, we have other search tools uh, with uh, free text. So let's say that you're only interested in those surveys that are focusing on discrimination, racism, and xenophobia, but only for people of Turkish origin. So you can narrow down the search um, with the combined uh, advanced filtering and uh, the, the keyword uh, filtering, and you will get the 38 uh, um, uh, surveys uh, for that subset of your selection. You are then able to sort um, uh, also the surveys by variables that, that might be of interest to you. So perhaps you're interested in sorting by the starting date um, of the survey, or you want to sort by a uh, sample size. So these are options um, that uh, we have um, as well. Um, once you've uh, uh, worked around uh, your selection, uh, what you can then do uh, by clicking on this uh, blue link is to actually have uh, information about the survey as a whole. Um, our search tool allows you to, give, uh, to uh, get some minimal information with this uh, kind of snippet uh, that it's uh, included as a default, but uh, to get access to the whole uh, set of uh, metadata um, variables, 
you click on uh, the blue uh, heading and then you get the detailed information about each individual um, survey. So um, you'll get their information about uh, where the survey was produced and what year it was produced, um, what are the um, uh, territorial levels at which the survey um, was conducted, a detailed list of all the topics that were covered in um, the survey, and um, a, a, a whole host of information about all of these dimensions that you can explore at your own time um, one by one. And in so doing, what we get is a very clear, detailed picture of the technical uh, characteristics of each of the survey. Um, in addition to that, um, uh, the part that uh, allows for um, uh, interoperability is that for each of the survey records, um, we have uh, the option of downloading the metadata through this XML file. So uh, if you click on this XML uh, uh, word uh, kind of link, you get a file. Um, actually, it's been downloaded into my computer uh, that depends on, on the browser. Um, but what you get is the whole uh, information about the metadata of um, uh, the survey in um, XML uh, uh, format uh, using DDI uh, to uh, standard. Okay, um, I'll return uh, to uh, the PowerPoint um, presentation uh, to hand over um, to um, Ami for the second part where she will be presenting uh, the back end uh, where we assure the sustainability of uh, the registry moving forward. All right, thank you, Laura. So, as she mentioned, I'm going to briefly go through what the back end of the EMM survey registry is. Um, and it is the part that is behind the front end that allows us to really manage the registry and the metadata that it houses. And for our purposes, the back end is particularly important in terms of the sustainability of the EMM survey registry for the following reasons. So first, um, as administrators of the, the registry, so someone like myself or Laura, we're able to easily and adapt the uh, metadata schema that we have developed for the EMM survey registry. So to give you a concrete example, right now we know that there are a lot of COVID related surveys being undertaken and they often include a substantive number of EMM respondents. Um, so we might foresee a need to adapt our metadata schema to include a variable that allows us to note surveys that have been conducted with COVID in mind. Um, another way in which the backend promotes sustainability um, and also a functionality that is uh, available to administrators of the registry is that we're able to actually use the backend to enhance how users experience and interact with the metadata. So to continue on with the COVID variable example, we can actually take things a step further. And on top of including that variable as part of the metadata schema, we can actually now include it as an option for filtering. So it could be the simple or advanced filtering option that Lauda has just shown. Um, and what that does is once we make that change through the backend, and it's a matter of just ticking the boxes that denote whether or not a variable should be included as a filtering option, any user then who goes to the front end will then be able to use that variable to pull a list of all the surveys for which the response was, yes, this survey included COVID as a topic. Now, the final kind of component of the sustainability of the registry that's allowed by the backend uh, design is exactly how we're able to add and edit metadata in a very easy manner. And for this specific part, instead of kind of talking through an example, I thought it would be helpful to actually show you the backend because this is something that it isn't just reserved for the administrators of the registry, but it's available and will be available, I should say, in the months to come to all of you who are maybe data producers and would be interested in contributing metadata for whatever survey that you are working with that meets kind of the parameters of uh, the registry. So let me exit out of this presentation and now jump to 
the browser. Hopefully this is what you see. Um, very quickly, Lara Nova Bell is the infrastructure or the platform that we're using for the back end. And I will go ahead and log in with a dummy account that we have for our project. It has the same functionalities or same permissions as someone um, who would be accessing the back end as a external user. So someone who has produced their own uh, survey and wants to contribute their metadata. So I'll go ahead and log in. Once you're logged in, you're presented with this dashboard, which provides kind of a snapshot of what's going on with the registry. So what kind of surveys are captured? Who might have been uh, interacting with the registry as a user? Uh, just to give you a sense of the activity of the registry itself. For anything related to the metadata, we want to go here to surveys and it's just a, a click. And you're directed to a new page dedicated to everything related to the surveys. Again, you'll see that uh, snapshot of the surveys uh, that are included, but then below um, right here, what you see is the full list of surveys that have been included to the registry. And just to um, kind of specify, we have uh, surveys that are in published mode. So those are the ones that are fully available for viewing on the front end and those that are in ready or draft status. Those are ones that for which the metadata is still being validated by us. So it's not viewable on the front end, but it's viewable on the back end. Um, for any of the surveys that appear on this list, uh, for any user, you're able to view the record by just clicking on this eye icon. And what it does is it sends you to a new page and it uh, presents all of the metadata that's been compiled for the specific survey. Again, in a very easy to read, easy to understand format. Again, same information that you would see on the front end, but just using this back end uh, display. So let me go back now. Now, in terms of actually contributing your own metadata, there are two different ways to go about this. So the first way is to actually fill out an empty form. So imagine that you have just done a survey um, in France, for example, and um, we'll continue on with the COVID example. It's about COVID and the experience for migrants, and you want to uh, contribute metadata about this survey. What you would do is click on this button here, create survey. And it would send you to this blank form that has all of the variables that are part of our metadata schema on the left hand side. To the right of every variable, you see kind of a field with a help text. Uh, so you understand how exactly you should be filling out information for the variable in question. Um, and there are different types of options. For example, this one's drop down menu. This one is an open field, but we try to use the help text to be very clear in terms of how you actually code in a response. I'll also mention that for some variables, you'll see this red asterisk, and those are um, variables for which we really would like to have some uh, real piece of information captured for a survey. So as opposed to having like a don't know or information not available type of response. So using the example that I gave, just so you can see how it works, I said the survey was in France, so I can click that. Um, I don't know if there's an acronym, maybe we're still trying to figure that as a survey, but maybe I know the survey name, it's COVID in France. Um, we'll say migrant experience. And maybe that's all that I can uh, code right now, or that's all that I want to do for today. And what I can do now is scroll all the way to the bottom. And I think this will also give you a sense of how rich our metadata is because we have over 200 variables. And so the form is quite lengthy. Um, so we do recommend that every few variables or at least every section you go down and save uh, your work so you don't lose everything. And you save by clicking on create survey. So that will go ahead and save the uh, record that I just produced. Now, once you input information onto a form and click on the button create survey, you are automatically designated as the creator of that record. And now in addition to being able to view the information, you have editing rights, which is why you see here um, this icon with a pen and a paper, which we'll also see on the uh, kind of initial homepage for the survey list, uh, the same icon. But if you go back in, now you'll see all the information that you inputted, and then you can enhance what you've um, inputted um, in the future. Now, one important note that I do want to make is that as an external user, you will not be able to publish information directly to the registry, just like we've done um, as a data community while we've been compiling the information through the Excel-based template. There is a very rigorous quality check process uh, that we require. So what that means is whenever you've actually produced a form that's 
fully uh, document, or at least to the best of your abilities, you will need to send an email to shock.project at Science Po Point Affair, which is our project email list, um, to indicate that this record has been created. And then we'll go through an iterative process to finalize the metadata that you've compiled. And then only when we as kind of the administrators of the register or the project validate the metadata, will we essentially switch switch the status to publish, which isn't even a, an option as an external uh, user, but it is for the administrators, so that we can then display the metadata on the front end. Now, as I mentioned, there's actually two ways of adding a survey uh, metadata, so that was option one. Now, the second option is perhaps more of a specific case, and it's uh, perhaps most helpful if you're working on a survey that belongs to a larger study. So it could be it's a repeated cross-sectional uh, study or a longitudinal study. And we actually have metadata for previous waves already captured in the registry. And as you saw, because we're capturing so much information for each survey, it can take a lot of time to document. So at least to make it easier for surveys for which we could recycle or reuse some of the metadata, we have an option to do that. And that's done by going here under actions, clone survey. So imagine this taking part survey, maybe they have a new a wave and we want to document it. We go to run action. And what it does is now you see the exact same form that you saw that was blank, but with information populated from the wave that we already have. And this makes it easier where all you need to do is now change the parts that might be different. So maybe the, the survey name here, it's not 2017, 2018, it's 2018, 19. And then I can make those changes and it operates the same way. I go down here, update, and that updates the record. But as you'll see, um, because this is a new record that's been modified by an external user, it's in draft status and it will have to go through the same chain of uh, quality checks in order to be uh, actually published onto the registry. So that, I think, is all that I wanted to show in terms of the uh, back end functionality. So now let me go back to the slide. And I'm sorry for all the kind of jumping back and forth between the uh, different screens. It's not the, the most kind of um, friendly for, for the audience members. Um, so now just to conclude, uh, now that you've been able to see kind of where the EMM survey registry is, um, I don't know why it keeps uh, jumping to other slides. Um, it's fully functional and we already have over or almost 500 uh, surveys captured from 14 different countries. So the next steps for us is really to focus on now opening up the back end of the EMM survey registry to external users. So um, as I mentioned, it's not yet available yet for all of you to use, but it's something that we're working on because it's important for um, uh, individuals outside of our data community to be able to contribute their own metadata because that's one way in which the the registry is able to be sustained beyond kind of the life course of the shock project as well as the other projects that are involved. Another kind of action item for us is to continue adding the metadata that has already been been, been compiled by the data community. So as Laura mentioned, we all ha we have thirty plus countries that are involved in the project. We only right now have fourteen uploaded to the registry, and so it's a matter of just finishing out the very rigorous quality check process and making sure that the metadata that we've compiled for the other countries are also included. And then the final um, action item for us is that we need to identify any specific updates that we need to make to really further enhance the user experience for the EMM survey registry, because we understand that the tool needs to be meaningful and beneficial to user communities in order for people to want to use it, but also to want to contribute to it. So one thing that we could perhaps look into is to uh, create a way uh, to make the backend form a little bit uh, user, I guess, to, to improve how you actually save your work because it is a bit of a nuisance to have to scroll all the way down. It would be easier if you could at least jump to the save button um, a bit uh, easier. So that is in a nutshell what the EMM survey registry is and what we've really done uh, to, to make sure that it's aligned with the FAIR principles as much as possible. Um, I will also point out that if you want to learn more or play around with the tool yourself, it is live. And if, um, if you have access to the slides, you just click on this link here and it'll take you to that landing page. Um, if you're interested more about our data community, you can go to our uh, website um, and you can learn a bit more of what we actually do. And then I'll also mention that we have a Zenodo page dedicated for our data community and we try to publish anything that we create including the slides for today's presentation there so you can learn about um, our, the work that we're doing and it's uh, publicly available so I'll go ahead and stop the share 
sharing screen feature and we can, I guess, see if we have any questions from the participants that we might be able to address. So we have a question by Manuela in chat and it's, um, once I have navigated through the survey metadata, how can I access the actual survey content? Okay, let me um, show this. Um, I'll share my screen. So once you go, for example, uh, to any uh, survey, uh, I'm just clicking on this one uh, for Germany, you can actually uh, see what is the availability on section eight. So you click on availability to the research community and then uh, you will get information about whether the survey is available uh, uh, publicly. And in this case, it is uh, publicly available. And if it is available, then you'll get a link. And this one in particular, just by good chance, actually um, is available. So you can just open the link and then um, you'll get connected to the actual uh, study description for that particular uh, survey um, in the in this case in the German data archive uh, that includes uh, the macro data. Um, so that's the way that we organize it. Our uh, survey registry is not a repository. Um, it is uh, uh, just a, a, as I said, a, a kind of census a list of the surveys um, that exist. I hope that that answers um, the question. Uh, and the same goes for uh, not just the micro data for the survey, but actually also for the documentation. So you get uh, information about the survey document and, and questionnaire, whether it's publicly available or not. And if it is, then you'll get a link uh, to the specific place uh, where that uh, survey documentation and questionnaire um, is available uh, for you. And if it's not publicly available, it will give you information about uh, uh, the contact people um, to learn more about the survey and to try to perhaps secure access, uh, which is quite variable uh, depending on the survey. Thank you both. Um, there's another question about um, joining. Um, how do the countries who are not yet on the list of the registry, uh, how are they able to join? Um, okay, that depends on which countries uh, uh, you mean. Let me share my screen again. Um, the countries that are listed um, in, in this part um, here on our uh, landing page, um, uh, those that are in black uh, are countries uh, with which we are already working um, and they have either already produced the, the, the metadata and we're in the stages of quality controlling uh, the, the information that they've sent to us or they are finalizing the compilation of uh, survey metadata. So if you are thinking about a country that is listed here in black, um, then it, in all likelihood we have or we're in the process of getting uh, the survey metadata for those countries. But if you're referring to a country that it's not listed here, either in black or in blue, then you can definitely contact us by email and um, uh, Ami will uh, put on the chat uh, the, the email uh, that you can uh, reach us uh, in and then we can discuss adding that country uh, to the registry as well. Thanks a lot. I see no further questions. If anybody would like to ask a question live, just please raise your hand and we will um, give you permission to, uh, to talk. Does anybody have any further questions? Um, so one of the, 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 the participants in the chat said that Slovenia is not in the list and uh, we did actually try to get Slovenia on board, but we were not successful. So if you uh, work in Slovenia with survey data and would like to contribute, by all means contact us by email and we will be more than pleased uh, uh, to collaborate with you so that Slovenia can be part of the registry as well.
And if there are any questions in the future, even if not today, then you can always contact through the, the, the email address that Ami has uh, shared with, with all of you today. We should use this opportunity to say that um, if anyone uh, in the audience uh, are working on uh, technical development and uh, have any ideas for improvement, we will be more than happy to consider them. So I think that, that might be a good opportunity for, say some, for saying something like this today. Thank you both. If there are no further questions from the attendees, I believe we can close the session. Thank you both. And thanks to everybody who joined. Um, we hope you will join us tomorrow as well. We have um, a day dedicated to technology and infrastructures. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank you very much. to everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.